Ladies and gentlemen, regarding family devotions, and I am staying with this because you're with your family right now, so many of you. If the newscasters are still home with their children and their spouses and their dogs and cats, I know you're home. And that's where you should be. But I want you to understand that without God, without prayer to God, and, by, and without reading the Word of God, you're not going to have a peaceful existence in your home life. Uh, so you need prayer and you need what we call family devotions. First thing in the morning, so to cut the devil off at the pass, Dr. Al Troister said the term family altar or family devotion simply means family worship time, family prayer time, family Bible reading time or Bible study time. Pardon me. Every Christian family should have such a time daily. It is amazing how few families really take this seriously and practice this routinely. It is the best guarantee to have Christian children with good moral standards that do not drift through the teen years to have a family that has a witness for Christ in the community and to have a family that takes the church seriously and enjoys going to all of the services of the church and participating in serving God. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pray for families that name the name of Christ, understanding that everybody in a family that names the name of Christ is not a Christian. Holy Father God, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the foundation of the government, the foundation of every community, the foundation of society, foundation of the church, the family unit, and uh, the husband and wife, the male and female joining together, having children together. And those who name the name of Christ, we pray that you would heal their marriage through prayer, for some through salvation, for some to humble themselves, to pray, to seek your face to turn from their wicked ways and to get back right with you and to get back to you with their first love, to repent. We pray that you will help families that name the name of Christ to humble themselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from their wicked ways and to get back to you their first love, to pray together, to obey together, and then to stay together. Holy Father God, we pray for the salvation of those families that don't know you as Savior. Lord, you know who they are. Forgive us of our sins as Christians of not witnessing to them, not obeying your great commission or your great commandment. And Holy Father God, I do pray that you would raise up laborers to the white at harvest field to reap the harvest before it is eternally too late lest they die and go to hell and go through life without the benefit of you in their family life 
And Holy Father God, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the poor Savior. Amen. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, join me in reciting or reading the new Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He was seen alive by Mary Magdalene and the other women, Peter and John and the other disciples, and over 500 other brethren. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in the holy, universal, and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Amen. I believe that the one verse we ought to read today is for the parents, primarily the father. God speaks to everybody in the family in Ephesians 5 and 6. And if your family has issues and problems, and most do, I highly recommend that you read this passage in your family devotion, reminding everybody in the family, from the husband to the wife, from the father to the mother, to the teenagers, the teenagers, and the children, God speaks to each and every soul in the family. And I believe with all of my heart that the problem in the family is the fact that everybody in the family is not playing their role, is not doing their job that God has commanded them to do. And I am convinced further by God that many people in the family who claim to be Christians have never been born again. They have never been saved. They don't love God. They don't fear God. They don't respect God. They don't know Jesus. They don't love Jesus. And as Jesus said about Judas, we can say about them, they have a devil. Because if you refuse to obey these family verses, and you try to lie about these family verses, and you try to concoct some other interpretation other than what the plain interpretation is about these family verses, you are of your father, the devil. And if you find these things grievous to do in your family, then you probably have never been born again because saved people line up with the word. They love the Word, even when the Word uh, convicts them or speaks to them. 
Verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You don't have to provoke them to wrath or to anger. Fathers, you can remain cool, calm, and collected and, and bring them up, nurture them. That means to encourage them, lovingly help them do what they need to do and pat them on the back when they do well and then pat them on the butt when they do evil and wrong. That's admonition. Rebuke them. And uh, what is the problem with some of your children who are out of control? I'm talking about younger children and, and, and even teenagers. They're out of control and doing all kinds of evil things, having fights, beating up people uh, in at the school, fighting with their sister and their brother being mean and hateful. When your girls ought to be virtuous girls, they turn out to be mean girls. By the way, some of the meanest people in the world are brothers and sisters in the family and how they are vindictive and vengeful and do evil to one another. They need my beloved, the Board of Education applied to their assets. That's right. That offends you tough. But the Bible says, God tells us to beat your child to save his soul from hell. Keep on beating him. He will not die. I know that's not popular. But none of my children have been to jail that I have raised. None of my girls have not been pregnant under my roof, nor have they even had sex with somebody under my roof. My boys have not had their faces cut and bruised in a fight with each other or with somebody in school somewhere. You know why? Because I, I nurtured them, I encouraged them, I helped them to find out their gifts and talents and all of that. I read to them. I taught them and so forth and so on, played with them, ran with them, walked with them out in the woods and through the football, through the baseball, played tennis, all, had all that kind of fun at the park and so forth and so on. But I also, when they did evil, such as lie to me, steal something, I also not only nurtured them, but I admonished them. Not just with words, but with butt whippings. See, that's why some of you folks can't take your children to the church. Well, right now you can't go at all. If you can't take your, church into the, your children into the real church, you've got to drop them off at Disneyland out in front of the church. Because you, you don't have any control over your children. And listen to me. Shame on you fathers and mothers who you hire babysitters and, and daycare workers to take care of your devil. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I, I, I've never taken care of any children like that in my life. So I, you, you, you didn't harm me. You didn't hurt me. But, man, you should not risk the lives and the freedom of young girls, young ladies who are willing to babysit for you because they need the money. And you leave your devilish, perverted child with them. Then if anything happens, they jump off the refrigerator, jump off the stove and, and, and bust their head open. You want to sue somebody. You want to sue that child, that, that young lady, and mess up her life. Any scar that comes on that devil because if he's a devil with you, you devil, he's going to be a double devil, devil with them. And you are not to drop your devil off at a daycare center. And some of you people, you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're mad as the devil, claiming to be Christians. You're mad as the devil. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. 
You're mad as the devil because the public school system saying they're not going to open up because of the coronavirus. Why? Because you want to let you release your devils, unleash your devils into the world to wreak havoc in the lives of those poor teachers who, who are only getting paid about forty thousand dollars or less. I wouldn't. I would not teach your child. You know why? Listen to me carefully. Because you can't teach a devil. Number one. You can't teach a child who is not disciplined. Number two, that's what I really wanted to say, but I had to stop it. Number, I had to, had to go by number one. The Bible says, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You are not to leave your child in a daycare center at the church, you hypocrite, you liar, you phony, you fake. You're raising a devil at home, and then you drop your devil off into the daycare center, and they cut other children, beat other children, and then the church is sued because the child, uh, uh, somebody, you want to lie on the keepers uh, at the daycare center at the church about abusing your child. When, when the church ought to sue you. You are not to drop your devilish child by any daycare center or any school until, unless you be a parent, father, mother, and you raise your child and you hold them accountable. And if they do evil, if that teacher tells you they did evil, believe the teacher. Stop telling them, no, not my Johnny, not my Debbie. No, 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 you're lying, devil. It is your Debbie, Debbie, and your Johnny, and whoever or Jaquan, or uh, Lada Keisha, or whoever. Get out of here with that mess. You mad at the teacher. I bring my child here to be taught, and every day I got to come down here because y'all can't uh, control him. You, you can't control him. You can't control her. They talk back to you. They call you by your first name. Call you mate or whatever, matey or whatever. Matt. Uh, Natasha. And they're eight years old, stabbing their finger and popping their head like you do at your husband. And and, and, and then go by the, the other sister, La Quenisha, and say, uh, uh, Natasha's getting on my last name. <laughs> the one we call mom, and you want to you, don't 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 you bow your head yet? It's not time to pray. Don't leave now. You know you're wrong. That's wrong. So that's the passage that we want to deal with today in the family. And you fathers, you you you're ultimately responsible. You're. You're ultimately responsible for your child acting like a devil. Not the wife. Not the mother. You, sir. God is speaking directly to you here. Let me share that verse with you again. I want you to get it. It's only one verse today. He said, preacher, I just don't understand how you get so much out of these, just one verse out of this, these family verses. Why do you, every day you got to say something from this family? Because you're wrong in your home life. But see, you want to be a hypocrite and act like you're so spiritual at church, you liar. Ah, uh, no. And raising up your unholy, ungodly hands at the church and twitching down the aisle with a dollar bill and envelope, waving it uh, like, like you're doing something. And, and got your child over there in the nursery. He is a terrorist so that you can enjoy the services. And the other people can't even hear the message because they're trying to save your child's life from jumping off the crib. Verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You can do that, fathers. No more, no more, no more lies, no more 
to steal a, a, a phrase from Tony Evans, no more excuses, gentlemen. You raise your own children, and you are responsible for raising your children. You know what this verse says to me? That, sir, you ought to be the disciplinary, not the mother. No, 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 no. no. You. Mm. Oh, yes. You, sir, not the mother. Let the mother do more of the nurturing. She ought to do that. And God, God forbid if she doesn't. She ought to be the one that, the, she ought to be the softer side of Sears. Not not to be there to run, for the children to run to them when the mean old bad, uh, big old bad father with the tail, and, and then she just, she tries to uh, diminish that. No, no, she stands with the husband. She stands with the father in the chastisement, but she ought not to be the one have to do it because I'm here to tell you she can't do it like you sir you know that she knows it and those children know it oh yes <laughs> just ten licks of mine with my with my my rod of correction uh, will be equal to about uh, 200 of hers oh yes Because I, once I get through with you, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see how you act now. And so, Father, you can handle that better. Another reason why you can handle that better is because it's not going. Hopefully, it's not going to be an emotional thing with you going to be a discipline thing, and you're not going to want to do it. See, see, and you are not to want to chastise them. And, and I'm emphasizing this because we do, the children do need nurturing, but they also need admonition and rebuke and chastisement. And, and, and most children have not gotten that over the past 50 to 60 years. That's why they're flat out of control right now. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to prayer. Pray with me for people, people who name the name of Christ. In this day and time, I can't even say all, you know, say people. Everybody in the church ain't saved. I'm convinced of that. I believe I, I believe that over 50% of the people in the church are not even born again, not saved. And uh, let's pray for the government. Let's pray for uh, the people who have suffered the loss, or rather the loss of loved ones from the coronavirus plague. Let's pray for the salvation of lost souls, the healing of the sick. Join me in prayer, and let's do it based upon 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And let me just say this, another reason why that passage that I just read about you nurturing and admonishing your children, you're not going to have peace in your home during this plague pandemic. You're not going to be able to homeschool your children if you don't deal with them like that. Love them, nurture them, encourage them, but also you have some children, unfortunately, that you've got to admonish, you've got to chastise, you've got to rebuke. You've got to do this, my dear friends, Whether you, and see, if you are a good, loving parent, you don't want to do this. But you must do this. God had to make me do this. I didn't want to do it. See, here's the problem. If you don't do what God tells you to do regarding the children he blessed you with, then he's going to get you. 
And one of the ways he's going to get you, you're not going to have peace in your home. That's why you always want to run out of your home. That's why you can't even talk on the phone in your home because there's so much cacophony and noise and racket and confusion and chaos. Why? Because you refuse to discipline your children. Hear me and hear me well. I don't care if they're mad or glad or sad or whether they have a box of macaroni or broccoli. It makes no difference to me or even okra. I want quiet in my home unless we're all watching a movie together or something like that. But for the most part, see, my philosophy is you don't have, you can't watch a movie, you can't watch television if you have not done your work. See, most of the day needs to be dedicated to work. In our household, is ministry work, uh, business work, uh, ministry work, school work, business work, family work. All that has to be done before you can relax and sit down and watch a movie or whatever. Uh, oh, yes, you got to work, man. And while you're working, you need to be quiet. You don't need to be all this talking and loud, talking. You, be, and you, so, you see, the older you get as parents, you got to have more quiet so that you can think. And so you need to lovingly nurture and admonish, that is, chastise, rebuke your children so that, sir, ma'am, you can have a peaceful, quiet home. Said all this racking and noise and people throwing trucks and cars and everything. Are you kidding me? No, sir. I'm trying to help you out through this plague pandemic, man. I'm trying to help you out. They need to be sitting down somewhere reading a book, doing their schoolwork. If you don't have a ministry like I do where all my children help me with the ministry and help with the business and help with the family chores and, and did their schoolwork, they had to do it all. One of the reasons why my oldest three children who are gone are hard workers, industrious. They excel in what they do. You know why? Because they had to work, buddy. I, I, we didn't, I didn't call it chores. You just knew when you got up in my house, you had to get it, man. You, you had to get it. You didn't, lay, you didn't lay around all day long watching cartoons. They don't even know what cartoons work. They don't know nothing about cartoons, Holly. Every now and then, I, I treat them to something like that. They, no, 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 no. Sitting around watching uh, Dark Shadows all day long and watching Ponderosa. No, man, no, sir. They don't know anything about that. They had to get it. They had to work. They, in fact, I believe they work harder under me than they will ever work in their life. What they're doing now is a piece of cake. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> that's why they excel. Because what they do and what they're doing now, that's a piece of cake compared to working under me. Because you had to work in the ministry. You had to work in the church. You had to work in the uh, business. You had to work and do your schoolwork. You had to do your family chores. You had to flat get it, Jack. That's right. And if you didn't do it right, you didn't have the right attitude, you lied, you stole something, whatever, you got your butt whipped. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't never had no talking back to me. Uh-uh. No, sir, we're not going to have that. We never had that. We never had any arguments. No shouting matches and all that kind of foolishness. No, man, you're going to do what I tell you to do in my house. Because I is the agent I see up in here. Not you, little child. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Uh -uh. I, I double dog dare you to call me by my first name. You know, mm -mm. I, I can't even tell you what I'll do. Okay, so you, I'm trying to help you have peace in your home and quiet in your home where you can live in your home with your children. And it's like they're not even there because they're sitting down doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, and see, all this letting the child get up and go when, when they want to go, like they're not in a, a school or whatever. They just get up and go into the refrigerator, get up and go and get this. 
You know, you can't do that in my house. You got to ask for permission, man. Because see, I, we got so many children and such a large family. We, I can't have that. <laughs> I can't have that. No. You see, we, I can't have people popping up, getting up, and doing whatever they want to do. And you can't either. Get some discipline in your house. That way you'll love staying home and you love being home. And, and, and uh, you can get into the saying, home, sweet home, not home, hell home. Okay? I'm trying to help you. All right, beloved, let's pray together. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Lord, for the family verses. Thank you for telling all of us, uh, ordering all of us, commanding all of us of what we ought to do in our family so that we can have peace and order in our homes. I give you the glory, praise, and honor for it. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you will help all of us who name the name of Christ. All of us who have believed in Christ and have been saved by Christ, help us to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways and to repent and to get back to you our first love. Holy Father God, we pray knowing that our prayers are not in vain, nor is our labor in vain. We pray for everybody in the government. Uh, Lord, uh, it seems like the more we pray sometimes, the more uh, crazy people get. But, Lord, we know that our prayers are being heard on high. And we pray for the president on down. We pray for all governors. We pray for all premiers and prime ministers and presidents around the world. We pray for all mayors. We pray for all um, sheriffs, chief of police, all deputies, all officers, keepers of the peace. Uh, Holy Father God, we pray for homeland security. We pray for everybody in the military. We pray, Lord, for salvation, spiritual, family life, financial, material, protection, and provision blessings. Lord, upon all of these people is my prayer. Lord, I pray that they will come to know you, Lord Jesus, as Savior, and repent of their sins and walk after your principles and not theirs. Turn their wicked hearts to do what is right for your glory, praise, and honor, and for the people. Lord, only you can do that. That's that's a matter that's in your hands. And so, Holy Father, God, have mercy and grace upon them, and please forgive them of their sins, for they know not what they do. And, Lord, we pray that you would crucify everybody's flesh and fill them with your blessed Holy Spirit. And, uh, Lord, we pray that you protect the poor people and all of the people under their authority. And Holy Father God, we pray for the salvation of all people who don't know your Savior. Help them to repent of their sins and to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and to turn from their evil ways. And uh, we pray for all of the people in this country, around the globe, and in the media. We pray for the the revival and the salvation of the religious people in churches but lost. And we pray for the revival of the truly saved in this country, around the globe, and in the world. We pray for your protection, of continued protection of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem, as you have commanded us to do. And we thank you, Lord, for the Jews. And we do not hate them. We thank you for them. How could we hate them when our Savior came through them? Your Holy Word came through them. We give you the glory, praise, and honor for the Israelites. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray uh, for the protection of everybody who is being persecuted 
uh, around the world for their faith. Protect them, provide for them, and we pray that you deliver them from their dilemma. And uh, Lord, we pray that you will give them your grace in their trying hour and some in their dying hour, as you've done for martyrs down through the years. Lord, we don't know much about that. I pray that however you will prepare us for such a day in our lives as well. And Holy Father God, we pray for the healing of the sick in the church. Help them to call for the elders of the church and to pray over the iPhone, confessing their sins as well so that they can be raised up according to your will. We pray, Lord, for the salvation of those who don't know your Savior. We pray for the healing in their body as well. And Holy Father God, now we pray for the comfort of the people who have lost loved ones tragically and painfully uh, through the coronavirus plague, many, many thousands in the church as well. And Lord, draw them to yourself for salvation and comfort. Draw them to yourself for your, uh, to your holy word, rather, for salvation and comfort, because we have no comfort to give these people. Lord, I know that that sounds rather crass, but in a situation like this, uh, Lord, you know we really don't have anything to help the people with. So the only thing, the most important thing we can do is pray for the people. For we have no words, and we can't even give people our words and our hugs as we used to in the past in this situation. And so, Holy Father God, thank you so much for the privilege to call out the names of those who have died from the coronavirus plague uh, when this whole world and the government uh, can't or choose not to remember the dead. We remember them, and we pray for the family that you would comfort them. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray for the family and friends of Michigan Church Music Director Michael O'Bannon. I thank you, Lord, for the person here who is keeping up with this list and help everybody to help her do this because this is hard and painful work uh, and uh, kind of work that uh, is unsung. And so, Holy Father God, we pray for the family of Michael O'Bannon. Comfort these people as only you can, Lord, for we have no words but prayer. We pray for the family and friends of Michigan Church Choir member Josephine Sampson. We pray for the family and friends of Michigan Church Board President Ann Singleton. We pray, Lord, for the family and friends of Michigan Pastor Nick Sherman Edwards, Jr. We pray for the family and friends of Pennsylvania Pastor's son Samuel David Perkins. We pray for the family and friends of Pennsylvania Pastor's wife Jean Perkins, another family hit with multiple deaths. Lord, the truth of the matter is this country, the government, many people in the church, with all of this happy talk that we're hearing and these lies that we're hearing, they don't want to mention these people because this, this does not fit with the American spirit. This does not fit with the American experience. This does not fit with the upbeat, can-do uh, idea of America. And this is why the church even is engaging in happy talk. The government is engaging in happy talk while people are dying left and right. Many of them, if not most of them, from the church because of our foolishness, God help us, because of our evil, because of our sin, because the church uh, has sinned against you with adultery, 
fornication, homosexuality, emphasizing money and materialism, destroying families, committing sin and evil. And so that's why we're dying, because of our own foolishness and sins and unwillingness to repent. And the, fam and the church has led, the family has led the church, the church has led the family, the family and the church has led the family as well, and the church has led the government and the nation and the world in rebellion against you. And that's why we are experiencing pain and hurting like never before in our lifetime. Holy Father God, as I prayed since the beginning and announced how I was going to pray, I pray that you will be thorough with us. I pray that you would break us down. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for these families. We pray for the family and friends of Ohio Pastor Gregory Clark, Jr. We pray for the family and friends of Texas Youth Pastor John Hernandez. We pray for the family and friends of Maryland Pastor Isadora uh, Armenta. We pray for the family and friends of Michigan Church member Crystalline Corkendo. And we commit these souls into your hands, their families, and ours. Let your will be done in all of our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we pray now for the people, some of the people who have sent prayer requests into us. We pray, Holy Father God, for the thousands upon thousands of people who have done so over the years, uh, who have never taken their names off the list, we pray, Lord, for salvation, spiritual, family life, financial material protection, and provision blessings upon them all. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. We pray for healing in their lives. We pray for comfort in their lives. We pray that you'll hear and answer their prayers and hear and answer our prayers as well. And Lord, we pray for a few by name. We pray for Bill. Bless him with a pastoral opportunity, if that be your will. We pray for Patrick. Save him and his family. Deliver them from violence and confusion. Heal them from psychological sickness. Help him to get married. Be with his mother and Father, we pray for him, O, oh, grant salvation in his life, grant health and happiness to him and his family, save his whole family, help them to repent of their false religion. We pray for Marie, provide her and her family with a new house that meets their needs, have them to find favor with the people and have the paperwork to go smoothly and well. Holy Father God, we pray for Esther. Bless all of the lives of herself, her son, her husband, and her mother. Bless them with the funds they need. We pray for Mary. Help her and her sister to pass her examination. We pray for Dalreen. Heal her sister who is under depression treatment and save her soul. Lord God in heaven, we pray for all of the people who have gotten saved through the ministry. Lord, uh, through the preaching of the gospel, we pray for all of the people who have gotten saved down through the years. Help them all to grow in the faith and be the Christians you want them to be. We pray for Saul, Zach, Tom, Robert, Mobisa, Junior, and O.G., and, Lord God in heaven, we pray for the people who have recommitted their lives. We pray for all of the others as well. Help them all.
call to grow in the faith and be the Christians you want them to be. We pray for those who have come back to you from a backslidden state and rededicated their lives to you. And Lord, even though we don't give an invitation for this at all, I've never, I've never been led to give multiple invita invitations about things for, uh, and, and as some people do for numbers sake. Lord, we just give the invitation for salvation. And uh, But these people have come back to you. They heard the preaching and come back and told us they were already saved, but they're coming back to you and want to rededicate their life to you. And we thank you, Lord, for them. We pray for Celestino. We pray for O.T. We pray for Brenda. We pray for Zeke. And we pray for Julie. And we pray for Don. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and for sake. Amen. Our devotional reading today is titled, Have You Ever Been Speechless with Sorrow? By Dr. Oswald Chambers. Luke 18, 23 says, When he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. The rich young ruler went away from Jesus speechless with sorrow, having nothing to say in response to Jesus' words. He had no doubt about what Jesus had said or what it meant, and it produced in him a sorrow with no words with which to respond. Have you ever been there? Has God's word ever come to you pointing out area of your life requiring you to yield it to him maybe he has pointed out certain personal qualities desires and interests or possibly relationships of your heart and mind if so then you have often been speechless with sorrow have you ever been there the Lord will not go after you, and he will not plead with you. But every time he meets you at the place where he has appointed, and he will simply repeat his words, saying, If you really mean what you say, these are the conditions. Sell all that you have. In other words, rid yourself before God of everything that might be considered a possession until you are a mere conscious human being standing before him and then give God that. That is where the battle is truly fought in the realm of your will before God's will. Are you more devoted to your idea of what Jesus wants than to Jesus himself? If so, dear friend, you are likely to hear one of his harsh and unyielding statements that will produce sorrow in you. What Jesus says is difficult. It is only easy when it is heard by those who have his nature in them. And this is what God has had me dealing with over the past several days. If you don't have the nature of Jesus in you, nothing we do here, nothing we do here will you like. Nothing I say will you like unless I start tickling your ears and saying what you want me to say to you. And that's not likely for me. because That's not my calling. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to make you saved, get you saved so that you can do good for the glory of God. And then you might feel good, but that's not the aim. I can care less whether you feel good. I want you to do good. And there are blessings that you will reap once you start. Once you are born again, you have Christ's nature in you, and you're doing good. Not because you have to, but because the Spirit of God is moving you to do so. And you want to. But
but I say with Jesus, a harsh word. Many people in the church today, many people in our so-called Christian families today have a devil, but we don't want to accept it. And so we try to Christianize them. A woman tried to Christianize me when I had a devil uh, when I was growing up in my dad's uh, household and when he was the bishop. She asked me, was I saved? And I said, no. She said, oh, sure you are. You Bishop Daniel White Jr.'s son. I said, okay. I, I thank God I didn't believe her because I would I would have died and go to, gone to hell by now. Some people in our so-called Christian families and in our so-called Christian churches are not Christians at all. They've never been born again. If you're persisting in sin and you're consistent in sin, you have never been saved, my dear friend. If sin does not bother you, if you can easily sin and slip in, slip in and out with a, a side piece and be on Ashley Madison and got a boyfriend, got a girlfriend, uh, you're a homosexual, and none, none of that bothers you, and you think that you're still uh, God's uh, choice servant, you've never been born again. You've been deceived. You've been bamboozled by the devil, and you have run amok. Back to the devotional. Beware of allowing anything to soften the hard words of Jesus Christ, dear friend. You see, people who are born again and have Christ's nature in them, they don't mind the hard words of Christ. They change at the hard words of Christ. They repent. They humble down. That's what saved people do. They respond that way. They don't get mad and bow up against it. They want to talk back and blame God and blame somebody else. Oswald Sanders goes on to say, I can be so rich in my own poverty or in the awareness of the fact that I am nobody, that I will never be a disciple of Jesus. Or I can be so rich in the awareness that I am somebody that I will never be a disciple. Am I willing to be destitute and poor, even in my sense of awareness of my destitution and poverty? If not, that is why, that is why I become discouraged. Discouragement is disillusioned self-love. And self-love may be love for my devotion to Jesus, not love for Jesus himself. Now, this is deeper than you wanted to go today, I know. So you're going to have to read this one over. Uh, you, you're going to have to get this one by freight because the, the, the airplanes are not flying to your head on this one today. Okay? Uh, it's going to come in 18 wheeler. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for this time today. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done and for what you are doing. Thank you for what you will do. And, Lord, we pray that you will be thorough with us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you will take your time with us and break us and make us and mold us to understand that we need to examine ourselves and see whether or not we even be in the faith. Not only that, for those of us who claim to be Christians, Lord, uh, we need to examine ourselves and see why we're not as grateful as we should be and always constantly wanting more, 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 and we're never satisfied and never content and don't have the sense to say thank you for the millions of things you've already done and have provided for us and blessed us with. There is something wrong somewhere. So, Lord, I do pray that your Holy Ghost would not give people rest under the sound of my voice. 
until they come to know you as Savior, that they will come out of religion and truly become born again and have a relationship with you. For there are people who claim to be religious and working in ministries and churches and coming out of so-called Christian families who don't even know you, don't want to know you. And thank you, Lord, for reminding me today of your holy word, that they love darkness rather than they love light. That's why they want, they, they, they want to persist in their evil ways. That's why they don't want to repent and believe in you. They instinctively know that if they trust you as Savior, they must turn from their nasty attitudes. They must turn from the demonic satisfaction they get in displaying their nasty attitudes and being hateful and being mean and being cruel to people and uh, being uh, unkind to people, disrespectful of you, not fearing you, not reverencing you, not respecting the authority over them. They get a demonic thrill out of that. They love evil. They love darkness more than they love light. That's why they won't come to you. So, Lord, thank you for revealing these things to me more and more, that many people who are in so-called Christian families and Christian ministries and Christian churches and even in Christian universities are not Christians themselves. So, Lord, help people to get saved like I did out of religion and out of the church, having been raised in the church. You know, my dad was a preacher, my mother was a preacher, but I was lost and on my way to hell. Didn't even know I was going to. So, Lord, save those who are religious but lost today, as well as others. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, if you're with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I can't make you get saved. I can't make you love Jesus. I can't make you... Um, hate your hate darkness and love the light and believe in Christ. <clears throat> but that's the reason why you won't come to Christ. That's the reason why you won't go to Christ. It's your decision. It's not that you don't understand the gospel. It's not that you don't understand what it means to be saved. You understand it. You just, you just don't want to do it because you love being mean and hateful and whorish and a whoremonger, and a liar, and a cheat, and disobedient, and rebellious. You love uh, seeing how people react to your nasty attitude, to your slights, to your evil words, to the uh, evil things you do to them. You love that evil. You know why? Because like Jesus said to Judas, or about Judas, he has a devil. You know why you act like the devil? You know why you think like the devil? You know why you walk like the devil? You know why you talk like the devil? Do you know why you look like the devil? Because you have a devil, people. And you need to repent. And we need to, as pastors and preachers, stop trying to Christianize demons and devils, people who are devilish, trying to Christianize them, oh, they just need counseling, oh, they just need to speak to so-and-so, oh, they need to go through a 12-step 12, 12 program, and they'll be fine. No, no, they need to make, they, they need to go through the one-step program, believe in Christ, and repent, maybe a two-step program. So allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him, Jesus Christ, for your soul's salvation from sin, the power of sin. See, you're getting saved not only from hell, you're getting saved from the power of sin, the power of sin controlling your life. As a child of God, you should not be characterized by sin all of the time. We're not saying that you will be perfect 100% in this body, on earth, but righteousness ought to characterize your life once you believe in Christ. So, 
if you truly want to repent and believe in Christ today, first accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin always. The Holy Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Please understand there are consequences for living a life of sin, having a sinful nature, choosing to sin. We die because of sin. The pay that we get for sin is death. The body goes to a grave. The soul goes to eternal punishment in hell. That leads me to my third point. Accept the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell because of your sins and not believing in Christ. Jesus Christ, who preached more on hell than anybody else in the Bible, any other writer in the Bible, or any other preacher in the Bible, and more than most preachers living today. Jesus Christ described hell as a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus Christ desired, uh, dis- desired uh, Jesus Christ described hell as place where they're weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then he says in this sermon in Matthew 18, 8, this is how bad hell is. It's better for you to cut off your hand or cut off your foot than to go to hell. He said these words, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Hell is a very serious matter. That's how serious God is about it. How serious are you? Now you can do what you want. You can party on jam, jam, boogie, boogie, and let the good times roll and just keep on shacking up with people and committing adultery and fornication and uh, being a homosexual and a lesbian and a a drunkard, a liar, and cheat all you want. Just understand, uh, you will die and go to hell if you don't repent of that can't do both. You can't be a Christian and a demonic hellion at the same time. You've got to make up your mind. The person you're going to serve, Jesus or the devil, is up to you. So hell is bad news, dear friends, but I have some good news for you. You can be saved from the power of your sin and your sinful evil life, and you can be saved from the consequences of your sin in hell. You say, how? Through Jesus Christ, by believing in him and receiving him, which means you're going to turn away from your old, evil, sinful life. You, you already understand that. You, you Stop trying to fool people. You know what you're doing. Receive Christ and believe in Christ. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So just believe in your heart, dear friend, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come.
come into your heart and save your soul. Don't pray the sinner's prayer if you don't mean it. You, you're not fooling me. You, you're not helping me. You're not adding anything to me when you do that. Uh, you, and you're certainly not fooling God. Don't even pray the prayer if you don't mean it. If you want to live a hellacious life and then die and go to hell, you go right ahead. But God is nobody to play with. I'm here to tell you as his messenger. He's nobody to play with. He's loving. He's gracious. He's merciful and all that far beyond even my imagination. But I assure you, my dear friend, he's nobody to play with. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I assure you. I guarantee you that. Okay? So you make sure that you're sincere about believing in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled and died for your sins, and was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. And uh, you're calling on his name for your soul's salvation. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell? Saved to what? Saved to heaven? We're saved in new, uh, to newness, newness of life as well. There ought to be a newness of life in you once you are saved. So if you want to get saved today, it's up to you. Nobody's going to make you. I'm not going to make you. I don't get any extra brownie. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't get any extra brownie points with God uh, if you get saved. I get all of my rewards for doing what God called me to do, and that is to preach the gospel. And I and if I do it willingly, and that's what I'm doing. So I get my I get I get the same reward for preaching the gospel whether you get saved or not. There's no feather in my cap. You don't get what I'm saying. That's a feather in Jesus' cap. I have nothing to do with it after I preach the gospel to you. I get no credit. I get nothing. And I've been doing it for forty years, my dear friend. And God and Jesus never came down off the throne and said, Good boy, my servant, uh, and Daniel, for seeing these two or three people saved. I, I'm not going to hear about that or see any of that until I get on the other side. So you need to do this for you, my dear friend. There's nobody with you right now. You're in the bedroom by yourself. You're on the couch by yourself or in the chair by yourself. Some of you are having watch parties, and you're with uh, some other people. And you need to encourage them to get saved, and you need to get saved. Some of you are on your deathbed. Some, are on, some of you are on your sickbed. Somebody invited you to come. There's nobody there. The nurses, you see the nurses, but they, they're not paying you any attention. Go head on and believe in Christ and repent. I have uh, one person right now praying for you. Everybody in this congregation ought to be praying for you, but I only see one praying for you. This is a life and death situation, dear friend. Is eternal life in heaven with God or eternal death in hell with the devil? It's your choice. I urge you to repent and believe in Christ. Follow me in prayer, the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart if you mean it. Don't pray it at all if you don't. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I admit breaking your Ten Commandments, for the truth is I have taken your name in vain. honored in parents. I have stolen things and money before. 
I have lusted after people in my heart. I lust in things. I have lied before. All of these sins and more. For thy sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. my failures and my faults as I do with all of my heart the Holy Spirit Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that I deserved to go I deserved to go to the eternal burning hell. I don't deserve to go to heaven. Just like a criminal go to jail. Holy for God, for Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul, and please forgive me of all of my sins. Help me to truly believe in you, Lord Jesus. Help me to believe in my heart that you suffered, bled, and died for my sins. was buried and rose. Jesus, please come into my heart and stay so and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, you know I don't want to be a hypocrite. 